What's going on, guys? Going to, uh, okay, it's episode 77 of The Comedian. I almost forgot to say that. Headed to LOL in Schaumburg, Laugh Out Loud in Schaumburg. Uh, it's currently a Sunday. It's gonna, I'm gonna be talking about like my cousin dying, um, the stupid people, like how I also think people should die, the stupid people who have said like, um, she, when she was 16, she thought Mount Rushmore was natural. Uh, my friend who asked if like cigarettes make you smarter. I'll talk about them and then, um, I'm also gonna try out this new joke about like if my family had slaves uh, and I inherited one, like I would let him go almost immediately type shit. And then I'll just talk about like three things that I would help him or have him help me with, like paint the fence, help me bring up this Alaskan king size bed and fuck my wife. And that's probably how I'll end the whole set. We'll see how that goes though. Do a little bit of crowd work. We'll see how the crowd is good. It's either a hit or a miss with this place. Uh, but it's been good so far in the past couple of weeks going there. So, yeah, episode 77 going good so far. I look great, uh, and I love you guys. <laughs> Mwah. Uh, your first of those two, maybe the best dressed comic in the scene. Keep it going right now for Mark Gorski! Shit, but I wanted to work it out and see how it went. That was quick. I think I'm 
burned through shit way too fast. It's okay though. I don't own a slave, don't worry. <laughs> Anybody here own a slave? No. What's up with slaves? No. My kids. Oh, no, technically. Do you make them work? <laughs> Hell yeah. Like what? Like just chores or like actual, like, you can go get a job with Down to 13. Aww. Mom needs drinks. <laughs> okay, guys, my name is Mark Garcia. I love every single one. Yo, what's cracking, guys? Episode 77 of The Comedian. It was at uh, LOL in Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, I went pretty good. I almost, like, lost the, um, not, like, lost it, like, freaking out, but, like, almost lost the um, being in control of it. Like, I almost started to, like, like be in the moment. Like, whenever I'm on stage, it just goes by instantly, like, kind of like a flow state type thing, but, like, in that set, like, there was like a second in there when I was like starting to like really be aware of everything that's going on. But then like I got it back into control. It felt like a car, like um, fish tailing. And then you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, my. God. Oh, holy shit. OK, so I'm not saying I, I think I did recover it because I think I started feeling at the, that time when I said um, when I was talking about my murderer cousin, when the two women in Hollywood, two in Glenview. Illinois do those two bitches not matter because usually there's a laugh right there but then I, I went right into the next thing I didn't like stop on or like really let it affect me but like right around there I started to become in the moment so I had to like relax and I think I might have even like like tried to like really just like do like a meta because whenever I get on stage I go before I go up there so I try to clear like all my thoughts and shit like that so um and like the people in the front row this one kid like you know how i sit on a stool this one kid brought the one of the chairs that's on the stage he brought that and sat down on that and i was like that's gonna be way too low dude it was fucking an awful set it was terrible and like people were saying like they like he was like not laughing or like for anybody just like like when you bomb you just want to watch there sit there and make them like make sure you're they're not getting laughs type shit they were right in the front row and like right when i said that it was a guy who was wearing a blazer i said something to him um i didn't really get like a reaction at all but like i just ignored them completely like i looked over the top of them entirely i didn't even fucking look at them once because maybe i could just feel they weren't laughing or something like that um usually not a good idea to bring your friends to an open mic <laughs> just saying just a just a little tip um when i but i was not scared but i was like oh trying out the slave bit is gonna be fun i was like where do i try this out probably not in the city first um but i, I like how it went it went good for the first time trying it ever um i think you know i've only done it 77 times right but like it comes with like you start to understand like i get i guess you go past the first couple layers of thought faster you know um and the fuck my wife part actually I got from somebody gave me that tag. I believe that was either Dan or Dylan gave me that tag. I like that. I think it's funny, uh, especially because I don't have a wife. But uh, AJ said it was funny that I prefaced when I was talking about like how this is like a th new thought or something like that. Um, and usually when a comedian says that's going to go rough or whatever. And then I say it when I preface, I go, so if my family owns slaves, he said that's good to, to keep the preface in because it makes the saying the family owns slaves funnier. Um, and I really like the, where I'm like, I would let him go almost immediately. I love the almost immediately. We'll see how that goes, but I want to, um, we'll see how it develops and shit. Cause like, I want to add on to that. Like at the end, like, like I'm not gay, but like, I, I need a man in the house. So that's why, that's why I keep, him. uh, or something like that. But like definitely something about like having a man in the house and shit like that. Maybe expand on that more, see where it can go. Cause tonight I get 10 minutes at the Vixen. It's going to be on the main stage. The Vixen is the place where, actually, it's not shown on camera. I haven't really talked about it maybe too much, but it's like usually right, it's in the front of a bar right by the door, and the door's open. So it's bright outside, and there's people walking by fucking going, oh, stand up was on your. Nah, and they just leave. It's like, oh, this is demoralizing. Holy shit. And the fucking person walks up with three children. You're like, I'm about to talk about cum. You should get out of here. What are you doing? It's very bad for comedy. Um, not like there's usually like 10 people in the room in the room um one time i showed up uh like an hour late to the post all right so it says starts at seven i showed up at eight i was the first one to walk into the bar the only person there was the host with the piece of paper for signing up actually i think i beat him there actually i, I asked the bartender I was like am i the first one here they're like yeah 
Like it's supposed to start an hour ago. Holy shit. And so, but they have a great stage in the back, the Gary Lang stage. But if there's going to be 10 people in this huge stage, this is going to go so bad, dude. <laughs> I'm going to try and do the 10 minutes. But fuck, one like you you burn through material. That's what it felt like too as well when I was up there. I felt like I burned through material too quickly, but I did the time, but I felt like I burned through it. I did add something in there to extend the time. I added in the um the India and Asia thing. I had that on the back of my notepad, but I didn't plan on talking about that. But I threw that in there because I I think I even said did I say up there I burned through material? I don't know, but it felt like I did. I think I definitely did. So luckily I I had that extra little thing I could throw in there. Um for ten minutes, I guess. I'm going to try and talk about I'm going to try and do 10 minutes. Um, bring back some old stuff I haven't said in a while. You know, my history teacher being a pedophile. I'll probably talk about those people who I want to die. And I'll, I'll do the third one with the India and Asia. Because that's pretty funny. She literally was like, should we tell him? I'm like, fine. No, don't tell him that India. And she did. Oh, I could say that. I could add that, like, she did tell him India was Asia. He's like, yeah, I know. And we are forever idiots to him. All right. Um about India and I don't like editing so you know I got to keep no dead air India and Asia okay LOL is usually a pretty hard room like it's a tough room to uh like it's not a good place for you to be like to if a joke shouldn't live or die based off of LOL laugh out loud and job like because like it'll work everywhere else but it might not work at LOL it's weird it's weird to go to places where you know it's like this is gonna suck this is gonna not go great I don't know but it's still fun. It's still a good time. Like tonight, it's probably not going to go well. But I hope it does. I hope there's a lot of people. That'd be fucking awesome. Probably won't be. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, I'll stay optimistic. I mean, anything. Just to get on stage is fun. You know, that's like just to have something to do during the week at night makes everything exciting. And I enjoy it. Having a great time with it so far. Um, like trying out new jokes. Um I want to see how much, how good I can get that joke and stuff like that. Because I haven't really, like I said on stage, everything I talk about is real. This is something I just had a thought about. Same with my neighbor running, um, like sprinting house to house. That did happen, I guess. But that was just a thought of me like, maybe he's not retarded. Maybe he is the smartest person on earth. He's saving so much time sprinting everywhere. If you sprinted from your car to here, from the parking lot inside, and then from sitting down to the bathroom, you're going to save like 30 minutes a year. I like that. Um, we'll see. Because 10 minutes is a lot of time. If you start to burn through material, and you're like, oh, shit. And it's like hard to gauge. Like, Because I, I now I know exactly what five minutes is. 10, obviously, you're, I'm not used to it. So I just got to do it more and shit like that. And usually when you get shows, I think they're 10 minutes. Could be wrong. Um, so I got to get that down. I got a five I could do. Pretty much. I really got, I do really want to just work on like a solid five that I could just pull out with no notepad type shit. I probably could do that. Um, and maybe I will. Maybe I have a feeling I'll do it Tuesday and then at Wed, at Wed Room, at Red Room. I'll do it Tuesday at the mic I run at Josephine's in Villa Park, Illinois. And then I'll do it again in the Red Room. And we're starting a podcast. We're doing it. Um, today's Monday. We're doing it Tuesday. It's called Who Are We? Uh, me, Dylan Mahler, and AJ Lydig are doing a podcast, live podcast at Josephine's martini bar and grill before the podcast or before the stand, uh, stand up open mic we're gonna be doing it live sit watch hang out with us it'll be a good time the star power is gonna drive this shit like we're these are great comedians these guys are great it's that's great to talk to they're great with the audience they're great with doing stand-up so there's like no way it can't be entertaining type shit so i think it's i think it's gonna be successful i have great hopes for it and like doing it with a live audience, I could really see us doing it like on the stage that you're going to see from the Vicks and like on a big stage with a live audience, like on some t Kill Tony shit, but like not having people go up and do stand up. But um, I'm not going to just keep talking just because I have a microphone in front of my face. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, if you want to support this comedic journey further, go to patreon.com slash wineboxpoppy. poppy. That is the best way to directly support. I also have a Patreon podcast on there. Um, also got merch at wineboxpoppy.com and have the EO and throw up noise as ringtones down below. I'm slinging ringtones, dog. Um, but if you can't do any of that or don't want to, I totally understand. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get that algorithm going, baby. I love you. Mwah.